Hey, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create the look of writing or drawing in sand. For your convenience, I provided this image that you could use for this project, as well as the font KG Midnight Memories. Their links are in my video's description or project files. Before we begin, if you want to know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, some mash that subscribe button and please remember to click like. To prevent our text or drawing from extending into the water, we'll make a selection of the water and then we'll make another selection of the wet sand which we'll use to soften the text or drawing inside the area of the wet sand. To do this, open your quick selection tool and make its radius 4 pixels. Drag your tool over the water to select it. We'll refine its edges by going to Select. In version CC 2015.5 and later, click Select and Mask. In earlier versions, click Refine Edge. If you prefer to use Refine Edge, shift click Select and Mask. I did in-depth tutorials on both of these filters, so if you'd like to watch them, I provided their links as well. I'll choose to use Select and Mask. If you're using this tool as well, Click the Refine Edge Brush Tool. To adjust the size of your brush, make sure the Caps Lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. Brush along the edge of the water to add fine details to the selection. Output it as a selection. Go to Select and Save Selection. Name it Water. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Drag your tool over the wet sand and the water as well. To remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. To check it, press Q to see it as a quick mask. Then press Q again to revert it back into a selection. We'll save the selection as well. Let's name it Wet Sand. Then deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Open your horizontal type tool. We'll make our text temporarily black so we can see it over the sand. If your foreground color isn't black, press D on your keyboard. Open your type picker and type in the font I provided, KG Midnight Memories. I'll make its size 219 points, however, feel free to adjust the size based on the number of characters in your text. The aliasing is smooth and center alignment. Click on the image and type out your text. To adjust the space between two characters, known as kerning, place your cursor between them and press Alt or Option plus the right or left arrow key on your keyboard. If you have two or more lines of text and want to adjust the spacing between the lines, known as leading, double click the large T of your text layer to highlight all the lines and click the character panel icon. You could also go to Window and Character. Place your cursor over the letting icon, and when the cursor changes to a scrubby slider, drag it to the left or right. If you want any text to be larger or smaller than the others, drag your cursor over that text to highlight it, and place your cursor over the large T icon at the top, or in the character panel, and drag it to the left or right. I'll raise up the bottom line by placing my cursor over the baseline shift icon and dragging the scrubby slider to the right. I'll shift the bottom line to the right a bit by clicking to the left of the bottom line and pressing Alt or Option and the right arrow key a few times. Open your Move tool and close the character panel. Drag your text to the center. We'll make our text a bit thinner by Control or Command clicking the large T of the layer to select our text's shape and going to Select, Modify, and Contract. Contract it by 3 pixels. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. In this layer, we'll fill the selection with black and since our foreground color is black, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Then deselect it by pressing Control or Command D. Click off the eyeball icon next to the original text layer to hide the text and double click the top layer to open its layer style window. Click Color Overlay and the color box. In the hexadecimal field, type in C7 
A, B, 9, 9. Then click OK. Click Outer Glow and the color box. Type in the same color. The blend mode is normal and the opacity is 70%. The technique is softer, the spread is 0%, and the size is 20 pixels. The contour is linear and the range is 50%. We'll convert our visible text or drawing into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively and replace it with different text or a drawing without having to redo the effects. To do this, click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. Double-click an empty area of the layer to open its Layer Style window. Click Bevel and Emboss. The style is Emboss, the technique is Smooth, and the depth is 250%. The direction is up, the size is 10 pixels, and soften it 0 pixels. Uncheck Use Global Light. The angle is 130 degrees, and the altitude is 0 degrees. Open the Gloss Contour Preset List, and click the Gear icon. Click Small List. Click Rounded Steps. If you don't see it, click the Gear icon again, and click Contours. Then click OK. Click the color box of the highlight mode and type in 7E7164. Then click OK. The blend mode is Linear Burn. The shadow mode is irrelevant since its opacity is 0%. Click Texture and open the pattern preset list. We'll be choosing Clouds. If you don't see it, it's located in the Legacy Patterns and More folder. If you don't see this folder, go to Window and Patterns. Click the icon at the upper right of the Patterns panel and click Legacy Patterns and More. Open the folder and scroll down to Patterns. In that folder, we'll find the Clouds pattern. Make the scale 30% and the depth 25%. Click Stroke and the color box. Type in D6C2B4. The size is 4 pixels. The position is inside. The blend mode is soft light and the opacity is 100%. Click Outer Glow and the color box. Pick Black. The Blend Mode is Color Burn, and the Opacity is 30%. The Technique is Softer, the Spread is 0%, and the Size is 0 pixels. Next, we'll mask out our text or drawing from the water. To save some space in the Layers panel, let's collapse the Smart Filters. We'll place our sand writing into a folder so we can apply a layer mask to it that will mask out the water. To do this, press Ctrl or Command G. Open the Channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Ctrl or Command click the water channel to select its shape. Open back the Layers panel and Alt or Option click the layer mask icon to make an inverted layer mask of the selection next to the folder. We'll place our sand writing into another folder by making the layer active and pressing Ctrl or Command G. Open back the Channels panel and this time Ctrl or Command click the wet sand channel to select its shape. Open back the Layers panel and make an inverted layer mask of the selection next to the Group 2 folder. We'll reduce the density of the layer mask because we don't want to completely mask out our sand writing that appears over the wet sand. To reduce the layer mask's density, open the Properties panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Properties. Reduce the density to 30%. Next, we'll change its perspective to match the beach shore photo. Make the sand writing layer active. We'll zoom out a bit to give us more room on our canvas. To do this, Press Ctrl or Command and the minus key on our keyboard. Open the Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. 
Go to a corner and rotate the transform's bounding box to an angle that closely matches the water. To reposition it, go inside the bounding box and drag it. To resize it, go to a corner and press and hold Alt or Option as you drag it in or out. Next, we'll go to the corners and press and hold Control or Command to warp our sand writing until it matches the perspective of the photo. To elongate our sand writing, go to the bottom middle anchor point and press and hold the Shift key as we drag it down. Continue to manipulate its shape until you like the way it looks. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.